Hi everyone, Melania and B Quad here from PHP Media. We are trying a new format. We are trying a podcast. We're gonna see how this works. B Quad is not excited, but we're gonna try it and we're gonna see how it goes. If you guys have any thing you want us to talk about, please leave your feedback in the comments below. We definitely read all of three of them <laughs> and we will comment back. Uh, we will talk about any scuba topics, places we've been, experiences we've had diving. We could talk about firearms if possible, if B-Quad has patience with me. But, uh, and if you guys have any suggested topics below, we will talk about whatever. I mean, I'm a biologist by trade, and if you guys have bio questions, you know, what kind of fish are down there, anything dive related. And on the shooting aspect, we're diving I, by trade. I do uh, engineering, so the technical aspect of both, you know, sports, I have a lot of interest in and can explain uh, how and why things work with those. Yeah. So we're going to try this out. We're going to see how it works. And uh, one thing that we do have that we can talk about today is next weekend is the Long Beach Dive Show. Uh, we are based in Southern California, um, and this is the big dive show for our area. We're really, we're looking forward to going. We went last year, B Quad went the year before on his own, and we're excited to see new vendors, see what they have. Um, anything you're looking forward to? I'm looking forward to seeing some of the different uh, new dive computers out there. Uh, Shearwater, I believe, just released a new dive computer, which is similar to the Garmin. So hope to see maybe possibly Garmin out there, get a hands-on feel of what the new dive computers are like. Yeah, yeah, that should be kind of interesting. I mean, I think that the idea of Garmin doing a dive computer is really cool because you can, you can see your GPS. I mean, Garmin is known for GPS. That is what they are, is a maritime GPS company. That's what they started, and they would do land-based stuff. But I think now going into a dive computer, I think you can get some really interesting data points to look at and really le relive your dives when you go back and look at a dive log. Yeah. Which I think is really cool. Where, you know, normally you'd, you'd list where you go. This, you can actually know exactly where you're at. So, like, some of our diving in Cozumel, yeah. we, when we were diving with a small outfit, they didn't really go by the name of the reef. They just pretty much plopped you in the water and it's their, you know, spot. It yeah. wasn't really marked. So it'd be kind of cool if you could mark to see where you were, so where you started and where you ended up. Yeah. And know, like, how much ground you covered or yeah. water you covered, really. Yeah, because, yeah, like, in Cozumel, I mean, yeah, there was the dive that we did, and they called it White House, and we were like, oh, like, don't you mean Villa Blanca? Because, like, I mean, literally, the Spanish translation is Villa Blanca, which is, you know, white, white, you know, white house. And the guy was like, no, 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 there's a white house on the shore. That's why we call it White House. And I was like, oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> Yeah, and you're not going to see that on any dive map uh, yeah. for Cozumel. Yeah, we've tried looking where we were, and we have no idea where we were. We know we started somewhere around, like, the top of the Santa Rosa wall, and we ended up somewhere else, but we don't know. But we know we covered at least a couple miles. Yeah, I mean, the current there was yeah. just rip-roaring. Yeah, so I'm excited. I'm excited to look at the new vendors, at least for the new, like, different dive trips and getting an idea of where we can plan our next, like, dive adventure after this year. Yeah, that's that's definitely the fun, or I guess it'll be the allure of the dive show, is just seeing all the different opportunities and places that you can go dive. I mean, and that's one thing, you know, one reason I know I personally like diving, because, you know, most of the world is covered with water. Yeah. So you can explore a lot of places that people haven't covered because uh, there's yeah. only so much land. Yeah, yeah. No, and like most most dive trips, I think like probably 75% of dive trips are going to be in more like tropical areas. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's ice diving and why people do that, I wonder. <laughs> but then again, I dive in San Diego and people wonder <laughs> why we dive in Southern California with water temperatures in the high 40s sometimes. But um yeah, I mean, like, that's a nice part about dive vacations, is they're usually in beautiful locations, surrounded by beautiful water. So, that's a cool part. Yeah, also, hopefully, we can take a look at some housing. So, uh, as some of you may have noticed for one of the reviews on PHP Shooting, uh, for the Ruger PC-9, uh, it's different than what, you know, the normal GoPro or some of the other videos you saw were on P uh, PHP Scuba with some of the artwork that Melania did. 
um, we now have a, a new new camera. So yeah, we got a new toy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> new expensive toy. So hopefully with the Canon SL2 that we're we're now running, we can look at some possible dive housings. Yeah, that should be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a lot to concentrate with. Lots of concentrate, even with the little point and shoot we've taken down diving yeah. locally. It's a lot more, uh, de- uh, a lot more thought required being in the cold water where you've got all the extra gear and everything versus the yeah. videos we've shot in in the warm water with just a GoPro because it's, yeah, that's you don't what, have to worry about so much more. Yeah, that's like the one thing about warm water diving that is like the gear requirement is so much less. Like you're in a thinner wetsuit, it's less weight. You usually don't have to run gloves. You don't have to run a hood. Typically, I mean, I see people run a hood in, in, in warm water, and that's fine. I mean, I get it for sun protection. Or if you get cold easily, like, I understand, because after a whole long week of diving, like, I definitely find my last couple dives, I'm like, okay, I'm cold. <laughs> and, I, and it's 80-degree water, and I can't believe I'm saying I'm cold compared to when we dive here, and it's, like, 50-degree water, and it's like, no, I'm really cold. Yeah, but, I mean, again, like you said, the difference in gear, um, you know, warm water diving yeah. in a, a thin wetsuit versus here i dry you know dive in a seven mil or my dry suit and yeah just a lot more added complexity yeah i mean it, it's weird when you talk about like a wetsuit in millimeters and like how much more cumbersome like you know between a three mil what i dive in in warm water and then like the seven mil it's like there's that much less like flexibility like in your arms and like how you move and in your legs like everywhere there's But you think, like, only four millimeters of fabric difference. Like, it shouldn't be that much, but it feels like a big pain. Yeah. And I know, like, whenever we go to warm water places and we tell people, like, oh, you know, we're from Southern California and we dive cold water, they always look at us like we have five heads. And it's like, yeah, I dive in cold water because I like to go dive, like, bottom line. Yeah. Well, people also, I get comments from people at, you know, my day job of, why do you dive here, you know, locally in San Diego and like, there's nothing to see. And well, one being married to a biologist, you get to learn a lot more, uh, what's down there versus, Oh, that's just something moving around. But, yeah. um, there's, if you actually take the time and spend the time in the local areas, you can find a very large abundance of life here. Yeah, no, I, I think like you, I think for any new diver, you really should consider buying like a Marine invertebrates field guide and maybe, like, a fish field guide. I mean, I don't think you need to go to the extent of getting, like, an algae, like, field guide because I think then you're, like... A little too uh, nerded out on that one. Yeah, you're reaching new levels of, like, you know, interest. But that's great. I mean, like, there's a lot of algae, don't get me wrong, and algae's pretty amazing. But, I mean, buy yourself a field guide. Like, it'll pay for itself and, like, the information that you find because you're going to notice all these things and, you know, you're going to appreciate your dives that much more because you're going to be more, you notice more when you understand what you're seeing. So, yeah, I think think having a field guide is, is good. I know I have two of them. I have a North American field guide for fish. And I also have, um, like, kind of more of a international field guide or, like, more of a diverse... Uh, whether it be diverse like underwater ecosystems because it includes a lot more like warm water fishes and stuff so. yeah so like when we go to the caribbean yeah. and, and so forth and then this year going to the south pacific which you know that's kind of our big ex- yeah. excitement for the year is doing so, a big B bi- quad and millennia turning 30 <laughs> and we go on fiji <laughs> yep so but yeah i mean that's what i'm looking forward to the dive show also yeah. getting to see some of the other interesting like kind of side offshoots for diving yeah. um also you you're looking forward to see looking at a uh, fourth element for yeah yeah so i so typically in warm water i dive a three mil and we're going to fiji for three weeks and we are going to be doing an extended amount of diving and i also know that the south pacific the water temperature is a little bit different than like the caribbean atlantic and so i'm looking at getting a fourth element five mil for the trip just to have a little bit of extra um, extra neoprene in my wetsuit so that I'm not as cold throughout the trip because you don't realize that like on a week dive trip like you you do get cold like it, you don't maybe realize it in the first like couple days but like towards the end like you start getting a little waterlogged yeah but I mean also you're at a it doesn't matter if the water temperature is 85 degrees it's still yeah. less than 98 point yeah, whatever you run it's still less than so eventually average. you're going you know dropping your core temperature yeah yeah, yeah. so That's, I'm yeah, especially with like, you know, we're going to be what I think on paper we have a minimum of 35 dives yeah. we're doing. So, I mean, even I, who I usually only run a skin in the Caribbean, like a, a one mil, I'm actually looking to get a three mil. I don't know if I'm going to go with 
uh, fourth element or maybe looking at Henderson. Yeah, I mean, I've had amazing luck with Henderson. My Henderson wetsuits are really comfy, haven't had a problem. They clean up nicely. They dry, you know, pretty quickly. So, I mean, we'll see. Yeah. Henderson Henderson has really good quality wetsuits. I, I think that they're they're a good a good starting block for a wetsuit. Yeah. And I mean they what is I'm trying to think. It's like it's lifetime on the zippers and like 10 years on the seals or something. I think that maybe your aqua lock one cuz I think cuz I've got yeah. the Thermaprime or yeah. I can't remember which exact one I have like for their, their rental line kind of. I think it's one step up from that, but um it doesn't quite have the warranty. Yeah. But, you know, it, now that I'm in dry suit <laughs> when I thought oh wetsuits were when I thought wetsuits suit. were wetsuits were expensive, it, it became a whole new realm jumping into the dry suit. <laughs> yeah. So um, and if you guys want to know any more about like our feedback on wetsuits or like a wetsuit sizing guide or Brian, like let us know. I mean, I did a lot of research before I bought my Aqualock. Um, I I did research even before I bought my three mil. I mean, at the end of the day, you work really hard for your money and you want to make sure that you're spending your money on good quality products and it's not just going to get you through one dive it's going to get you through a lot of diving and i don't think that you should look at dive gear as being disposable <laughs> unless, well, like, it, it, unless it's a condom catheter <laughs> <laughs> yeah for, for dry suit diving yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't really want to reuse those that's um frowned upon in most, yeah most but uh, you know most dive gear is uh, a lot of it is kind of I guess, life-saving or life-preserving equipment, so that's not yeah. something you, you want to necessarily take lightly. It's not something that's major, like, oh my gosh, if you don't have the best, it's it's nothing. But you want good quality gear yeah. for, for the price, I mean. But, like, a crap wetsuit versus, like, a nice wetsuit is, like, a world of difference. Yes, because, like, the rental ones we had when we first got oh, certified yeah. versus, like, oh, our own that actually fit. Yeah, oh, God. So much so much better. I just remember like our open water class and like I remember being, you know, in a in a like in a chest down position like kicking and the whole front of my wetsuit like scooping, like opening and just all this cold water dumping into my chest and being like, "Oh my god. What have I done? <laughs> this is horrid." But like with my aqua lock, like I don't get that at all. Like basically, I have my little like you know, cushion of water around me. And that's basically the same cushion that I dump out when, when we come out of the water and it stays right there. Yeah. So it's kind of nice to just have that one, one little layer of water versus this ever exchanging layer of water because yeah. the seam doesn't fit you. <laughs> yeah. So, but I think that's kind of what we're looking at. Is there anything else we're looking forward to with the dive show? I mean, you always like to look at the rebreathers because those yeah. are some pretty fancy pants technology pieces. Yeah, they're fancy pants technology. And eventually I want to get into the tech aspect of diving. Um, as, like I said, background of being kind of an engineer, all the intricacies really uh, pique my fascination. And, you know, right now going from a where I started on a oceanic BCD and now getting into um, a more technical, if you will, uh, setup with backplate and wing and kind of looking to move towards that direction since eventually I do want to try to hit technical. Even if I don't do technical dives, I think having the training, you know, recreational dives will be that much easier or that much yeah. safer. I don't know if I want to necessarily safer because it's not like I do anything that's dangerous. No. But... It, tra it trains you for contingencies and you see more situations so you won't if you have a slight problem underwater it's not going to be panic yeah yeah i think and i mean also like when you do um like fundies or what is that through do you not do i gue gue like when you do fundies like and if you have a partner like a dive buddy or people that you dive with regularly that have done stuff like that or a school of diving like that i mean your underwater communication is like that much better because i know from people that we dive with who have done fundies, I mean, they can have, like, a whole conversation. And you're kind of like, what? What are they talking about over there? And, like, they just have a better understanding of, like, you know, what one person's doing, like, what their intent is with how they're moving a certain way, or if they see somebody setting up for whatever, like, they understand better. Cause... Well, they also all have the same gear set up to a degree yeah. so that, you know, everyone knows where yeah. everything is. and yeah. If they need to help, you know, their buddy out, they kind of yeah. know the configuration. Yeah, but I think tech diving, I don't know, I think it's kind of the difference, like, I don't want to say the difference, but it's like somebody who's a professional driver. I mean, it's not going to make you necessarily a better everyday driver, but it is going to make you understand better, you I, know, like I defensive slightly, driving situations or... Yeah, I slightly disagree because I think it, it does make you a better 
you know, day-to-day diver because mm-hmm. they do work a lot on, you know, making sure your buoyancy yeah. is spot on yeah. to get a pass in their in their class. Yeah. Um, but a lot of that also has to do with, like, the instructors you had from Absolutely. your basic open water through your Absolutely. advanced and um, master diver course. Absolutely. And I, that could be a really good podcast topic that we could talk about is, like, the worst divers that we have seen. Oh, man. We have seen some... <laughs> Some really bad ones <laughs> from seen. from all organizations, but mainly there is like there's one, one organization one. that uh, tends to have some of the. Uh... There's one. It starts with an. <laughs> okay, um, we won't say it. <laughs> yeah, we won't. We won't get into that now. We'll leave that for another yeah, topic. But I mean, I think that that could be a really like fun topic. And if you guys want to hear more of that, or you guys have stories about like bad diving practices, like let us know in the comments. Like, I love hearing knucklehead diver. Stories. Yeah. Although it does break my heart because at the end of the day, like if somebody's being an idiot underwater, like they can seriously hurt themselves. They could seriously hurt somebody else. Yeah. It's and being in the sport, it I don't like hearing about anybody that gets hurt. Like yeah, I I know it happens. I I know it happens regularly, but I you know you don't want to hear about somebody hurt, getting hurt doing something that you love to do. Like I don't think anybody likes to hear that. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's just and it also brings bad like i don't want to say juju but like kind of bad things onto the sport it's bad press yeah because then you get people who are like oh my god diving is so dangerous and it's really not especially as as long as you adhere to the safety principles that's taught in every beginning diving course and the other courses if usually the accidents happen when people don't adhere to the safety standards from all the agencies which yeah. is pretty much universal some have more yeah. stringent than others but yeah some reinforce it differently and i mean both of us are nawi divers we've done all of our training through nawi and we really i i like them as an organization i think that they do a good job and i do think that it is important that they start um some of their like habits that they teach you know even in just basic open water with rescue protocol and you know what to do how to surface safely with an unconscious diver or, you know how to do different techniques i i find that i appreciate that yeah but we could talk about that in another podcast yeah that, that's that's a f- good topic for a future discussion but i mean it's not necessarily just the organization it's also the people we Absolutely. went through so Absolutely. and that's the important thing with whoever you go through yeah. for diving education is the instructor you have to be comfortable with absolutely but anyways i think we probably could wrap up this you know, first intro of the podcast, but I think maybe we should kind of give everyone, um, an idea of, you know, what our background is in diving and I can give a background on the competitive shooting or shooting side just so they can understand what, you know, PHP media, the expertise that we bring to the table. Yeah. So, So, um, for diving, we are, we are, uh, master divers. Yeah. Now we master divers, not dive masters, master divers. Yeah. So we are master divers. We both hold that certification we both hold nitrox cards as well um nitrox is our preferred gas that we like to dive with um that's a motorcycle going by so please don't mind that uh we forgot to close the window (laughs) um we dive locally here we've dove down in cozumel in bonaire we um we have uh, definitely over 50 dives, over 60, over, over we're 80. In, we're in the 90 range right yeah, now. Yeah, okay, sorry. Um, our, both of our max steps is north of 120. Uh, well, master diver, we did our max. It was 125, and then also in Cozumel when we did Devil's Throat. Yeah. It was, I think, about, about the same 125-ish, 122 to 125. Yeah, so... Um, not to say that, like, we're these old diving souls or anything, but we, we do have, a, uh, I, w- I would say, like, beyond novice. I mean, I think we're getting into, like, intermediate level of, of diving. And all this is, we got, you know, certed for our honeymoon back in, uh, 2015, 2015 yeah. before our wedding. Yeah. Because uh, that's when we were going to Cozumel. Yeah, so. and we've dove on wrecks here locally in San Diego. We've dove on Rex and Bonaire. We've done the Helma. We would that would be a fun podcast would be to talk about all the places that we did in Bonaire. Yeah. Just go through the lists and let people know what we thought. Um, and then like I said, so me by trade, like I am a biologist. Uh, it's what I studied. It's what I love. I love learning about the world around me. And my poor husband B Quad gets dragged into like me discussing different parrotfish. <laughs> there are a lot of different types of parrotfish, as you pointed out in Bonaire. Uh. And 
So for me, I always will try and find, you know, all the different species of fish and coral and algae and um, crustaceans and, uh, you know, everything that I can find. I'm always very interested in looking at it and talking about it and talking about people on the boat, even though they don't want to hear about it sometimes. <laughs> but um, so that's our background in diving. Um, B Quad is more on the shooting side. Yeah, uh, I've been shooting, you know, in regards to that, I would actually say I'm fairly... Um, knowledgeable in that arena. I've been shooting, you know, since I was probably about six or seven. Um, and then now competitively shooting for the last four or five years. Shot a little of competi competitively in college, but have really gotten into it. Also, you know, do a lot of my own gunsmithing and tinkering. That's kind of the part of being an engineer. Um, always want to know how things work, how I can improve things. We're thinking, well, they did that kind of crappily. I think I can improve upon that. So um, I've had a lot of experience with that. Uh, my shooting ability, especially started since I started uh, competition shooting, has I've seen a lot of growth in that. Um, so I'm involved with a bunch of different types of shooting competitions, tactical shotgun matches, three gun, steel challenge, IDPA, rimfire, two gun. Um, shoot some trap and skeet every once in a while, but not as That's much. That's my extent of shooting. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, any questions on guns, gear, um, you know, I have, I'm considered, like, the go-to person, like, when someone's looking to buy firearms at my work, you know, asking, you know, my, my opinion on what they should look at or um, how they should maybe, you know, think about going through the process. Yeah. So, if you guys have any questions on that, feel free to ask me. Also, again, diving. Yeah, uh, diving, I'm, we're both great sources for... Go, great sources. I'm very much the planner on, on like, the dives. Um, everything like very detailed out to me, but, uh, I could plan a dive. Yes, you, you can. It might be a little bit looser. But... Yes. I'm more, much more rigid in that aspect. Yes. But, um, uh, I think that kind of rounds it out. I like, think it does. anyone have any questions? Again, put it in the comments below. Yeah, all five of your comments can go yeah. down below. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we don't have too many followers yet, but hey, we're trying we're, to, we're open. Yep. We're open. Anyway, I uh, hope to talk to y'all soon, uh, probably next week after the dive show. Yep, we'll do a recap of what we saw, what we liked, what we didn't like, and uh, mm -hmm. kind of some possible things coming from the future. Yeah, alright, bye!